Ed, you've got to be back in Verse Pro with this crowd in front of them, but you never know. Cloud9 have the potential. We are live into this one. Ladies and gents, let's get this started. And already we are seeing Shazam and nothing starting to look towards that B side, but waiting is Neo with a dink to the face. Not the best start. You know, down to three points of health as Shazam leads the charge up Banana. Has the uh, smoke to hold him back. But Pash is in their face already. He's gone straight down mid. Semphis gets himself the frag. Here comes the next man. It's going to be Snacks to chase down Sir Shazam, who rattles off a few shots blindly into the smoke to hold back the advancing Americans and, uh, sorry, uh, advancing Poles and does exactly that. And uh, it's a two man advantage from this point forward for Cloud9. They need to play this one by the numbers and they make the entry. Shroud and Shazam get the frags. Cloud9 are three points of health away from taking the round. Great beginning. But then again, Virtus Pro went absolutely insane. I, I, I blinked and then suddenly Pasha was down the bottom of mid, deciding you want to get in their faces. And I definitely want to watch that one back at some point because that was absolutely crazy stuff from Virtus Pro. Maybe trying to you know, ride the real high note of having this crowd here, get the Commodores, get in the face of the American team very early on, try and knock them off that hot streak. But we've seen it's not really worked out and they will be left with a couple of P250s here and there, a smoke. You can see Taz dropping that right down mid. Maybe going to allow some more aggression. And actually, look at the stack coming down on Banana. Virtus Pro going hard, trying to see if there were a rush coming up that Banana walkway, but it didn't come for them. And uh, now they will have to retreat and set up a more standard split as they place players over towards A. Cloud9 deciding, you know what, we will just take this one easy and play this by the weapons. I think that's a good idea. It's a brilliant idea, because you can see the Virtus Pro want them start pushing, start making these mistakes, try and force them into these errors. And already they've rotated four players back towards A. We've got Pasha and Snacks at that CT arch. That deep smoke maybe trying to kind of corral them in towards A, but Cloud9 taking their time, and then the map's once again pretty much open for them. And yeah, there are two different uh, schools of thought. You're either a Navi team who lets the play unfold in front of you, or you're a Virtus Pro team who makes the play happen. And uh, in these two rounds, we've definitely seen uh, what VP are. Yeah, and Pasha Smoke then once again trying to off-put them towards B, but yet they're stacking it out with three players. And Neo, the one right at the front here, Semphis, waiting for the challenge. This is running down so long on the clock, and another Smoke! Semphis is held off again. This is going down to the wire. Yeah, it's going to force uh, the assault to A, which was already incoming. Pasha is uh, the man who will see action as he will dart back in towards that side. It's going to be pounded down by the weaponry, and uh, Bialy gets himself frag number one, and Sean Garris that goes down, but Shroud and Nothing help themselves to frags as we're at three on three as Taz joins the fragging. Bomb down, oof, and advantage is eaten away. Taz doing a lot of damage right now. Taz has been hiding out in this pit for so long, and Neo finally can help him out. Semphis holding off as best he can. Time is now with the T's. Taz looking for something. Neo doesn't get it. It's Taz to find Semphis. Now 1v2. Shroud denies Taz. Can he hold off against Neo? Neo pushes in. Gets tag looking for it. Shroud dancing between the time on his side. But Neo just doesn't have enough time to get the defuse. But a beautiful retake. Just a second too late. Well, Taz rolling back the years to uh, hold on to what was once called the Moto Pit for a play very, very similar by uh, Dave Geffen in the World Cyber Games 2004. And that time, though, it resulted in a win. It's for uh, Virtus Pro. If nothing else, it blew away the cobwebs. Cobwebs. It was incredible how much they controlled that map, even on just an eco then, pretty much. They had a couple of smokes here and there, and they constantly pushed Cloud9 where they wanted them, and it was so close at the end. Now, Virtus Pro once again, you know, a Tech 9 on Taz with a bit of armor. Neo does get an AK for himself with head armor as well. So there could be some damage done here. I want to see where they place it, where they set up, and Semphis is having none of it now. He wants to go through that deep smoke. Maybe try and catch someone out early on, but looks like Verse Pro don't want that. Smoke will just allow Snacks not only to escape, but it'll hold Symphus back. And uh, it's kind of nine sides. Unable to quite uh, find their desired route. They're looking to see whether VP will come out. And that's the right play to move because VP are going to show themselves in some way, shape, or form. They're going to try and get a numerical advantage, try to level out these numbers if they can. For them. So they're actually on the right side here. Three players from Buzz Pro. One with the AK. Neo is the important player here. If he reads this right, he could possibly hold them up for so long, but another smoke comes in, and Cloud9 have been pushed so far. Down to uh, just 35 seconds. Neo is sensing the opportunity for a frag. 
makes the crossover and gets back towards that site. BP have very little intelligence other than knowing that there's something coming B. There we oh. go, Fred comes in, it's a team frag that drops Senthus. Shazam out by Neo. Neo now looking for the next one. There's uh, Sean Garris goes down, but both he and Snacks are now out for the count, and we're at three on two with uh, Cloud9 on the site. Asher buying so much time, allowing the rotates to come off of A. Bialy and Taz now seconds away. Taz finds Shroud. Nothing goes wrong. It's Bialy to take down nothing. And these rounds have been beautiful from Virtus Pro. Finally able to convert one. That's going to be one to two. Really nice play from uh, BP there. If you look at the clock, it was always in their favor. They wore it down and down and down before uh, forcing Cloud9 in. And by the time Cloud9 had got to that site, they had uh, been equalized out by Taz, who two rounds in a row has picked up big frags. And I think I think Shazam, who got the team kill early on, certainly didn't help things on that execute towards the site. Neo then just following up in the perfect placing with the AK. He read it so well, and he kind of switched up with Pasha almost. They were both kind of going down that speedway side, and then he just stuck it out. And this is going to be unreal to watch. Both teams now starting to show what they're made of. And Steve Nade coming out for Pasha. Does catch them just a little, but it looks like the T side are going pretty darn aggressive once again. Up the BDA route they will go, and it'll be Sean Garris leading the charge. Neo lies in wait. They want to get a quick plant down here if they can, but the smashing of the bomb planter will be Neo, who is uh, dropped at the end by Sean Garris. Snacks will return the favor onto Shroud, and next up, Sean Garris has frag number two of the round for him, and the bomb is down three on three. We take very, very possible here for Burns Pro. Molly towards our second box. Not going to meet Shazam at the back, but Pasha's AK will. And now 3v2, the retake is certainly on. Sean going to back in towards Dark, try and find some comfort. Some Semphis lovely. Banana, though. Tag comes out now. Semphis in a 1v3. He's going to have to clutch. They're all low. He gets in IBR. He holds the smoke. And Virtus Pro equal up the score. They do. Picked up that. And from Cloud9 perspective, with the weapons they had going into it, a bomb pump was the minimum they had to achieve, and they got that. Yep. Frags on the board, too, nicely done. But after plant, they were going up against three fully held and fully naded uh, VP players. So it was always going to be a tall order. Most certainly. And we are finally seeing, I think, this is an interesting buy coming out from the T side. At the moment, a real mixed bag. Two Tech Nines, three AKs, a couple of mollies. Well, a molly, should I say, or nothing. And I don't know what they're going to try and make a play out of this. They've clearly got something in mind. A bit of a 3-2 split to begin with. Neo and Snacks once again getting aggressive. The deep molly comes out. And Neo just doing so much damage with Snacks. Semphis going down. And so much damage so early on. Just goes in first pro's favor. When you've got three guns going in that hard and you feel that you may be going up against some form of a mixed buy or even a save that they may have thought might have been coming, then why not? Asher already rotating back around. They're reading the play so well at the moment, first pro. Bialy waiting in pit. So the rest of the T side start lining up. Nothing Sean Garris going to make the way through. Shazam supporting in those apartments. And after already seeing what Taz can bring alone in pit, and seeing what Bialy can find as Sean Garris finally does make his way through towards quad. Taz waits on the side. Bialy does find one, but actually the execute's working from the T side. It's going to be Shazam down to just six points of health, but with all the play to make. There's he and nothing will hold the pit with Sean Garris making the charge in towards the site now. Shots fired in towards that smoke by nothing to hold Neo back and the bomb goes down for the well, fourth time in five rounds. Here we go, Pasha, snacks, frag after frag, it's all on Sean oh. Garris, one versus three. He's forced out by the Molotov and will be forced down by Neo. Perfect placement, they do get hold of that bomb. The defuse will come into place and every time Cloud9 finds something a centimetre to try and punish. It just gets covered up by the brilliance that's coming out from Burst Pro in some of these rounds. And well, Cloud9 now. Once again, back with the AK to Galil. They're forcing this one up. They want to make a dent in this. They don't want to allow Burst Pro to start getting that ball rolling. We know what these guys get like when they get that confidence. It was a big point on the desk that if Burst Pro starts CT, which they are, and they get that confidence, they get the crowd chanting behind them, you can't stop them. Now, this might be something you might normally say of a T side, but five rounds in on the CT side, and you've seen five very different rounds from Virtus Pro. They pushed mid, they pushed down uh, Banana, they've you know naded Banana heavily, and then just have one guy peeking. They've tried something different each and every round. Never have they just sat deep and passive and waited for the T's to make their play. And it's been really interesting to watch, and it's now starting to work in their favor. It definitely is. T side trying to draw them out, maybe try and get something from it, get that information early, but 
just seems there's an endless supply of smokes and flashes in the CT's hands that are just being put to consistent use. But a four-man stack already forming on A. This is what I mean by them not necessarily reading the game perfectly, but always trying to predict the sights they're on, stacking it out instantly. Neo gets a little aggressive, spots him out, gets the information, backs, and waits for Snacks and Pasha to maybe rotate over if they feel it's necessary. Still, Sean's lurking, maybe trying to find someone getting aggressive on towards A, but there's no easy way in for Cloud9. Move the bomb over towards the A site. We have Pasha to be their first hurdle to overcome. He senses danger. Here we go. His Molotov will force them back momentarily as he retreats into the site and the nades will exchange. Now Semphis is going to be the man to lead the assault in, but he has weapons being fired in from both the site and the pit. Pasha claims to. Shazam and Shroud have two of their own, but Pasha's hat trick is completed with the frag onto Shazam. And now Shroud will go down and be frag number four for Pasha. Is this to be the ace? Nothing goes in. And we'll stop the ace in its tracks, but the round is away from you. CT side then holding out. Pasha, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Neo does find nothing in the end as well, so denying any weaponry from Cloud9. And I'm not sure if they're going to want to force this one again. They've been you know, scraping by in these rounds, it seems. And even though they've been dragging and trying to pull Virtus Pro site to site like a T side does, Virtus Pro having none of it. Absolutely none of it. And Snacks having a good performance already in this one. We are seeing a Galil pick nine. Molotov smokes and flashes. Maybe. I'm not sure what they're going to put that towards, but once again, you can see that just to the left, nothing. Banana was completely cut off there with that smoke coming down very early on. Virtus Pro just waiting out. They're playing it calm, they're playing it so well. Tempest starting to build. Time for Cloud9 to get something on the board, and they have a real mixed bag of tricks to do it with in this round. They've not gone down without uh, fights. They've made each round, they've got two to three frags. They've made it expensive. They've got bomb plants on the hole. That, that's what's enabled them to keep going in this six rounds, despite having not won one in four. action next with the help of Biali, but the push is over on B. Certainly is. Snacks does deny them on the entrance. Finally, Neo is at the back though, waiting this out. I wonder if Sembis and Sean actually know this. I'm not sure if he's shown himself just yet. And Neo waits patiently, doesn't get the shot. Sean checks dark, gets him down. This should be a plant for the T-side. Unless these two men can stop him. Semphis gets caught through the smoke by Taz. And now just Sean stands 1v3. He goes down to Taz as well. And another round on the board for Virtus Pro. These guys are just going back to back. That confidence is going to be obscene to overcome now. Yeah, Taz picking up his numbers and uh, he's having a great round there. That'll put him up to six. And look at the home crowd there. You know, at DreamHack you go and you see 99% uh, NIP shirts. Here you see 99% Virtus Pro shirts. I'm not sure what a Tessero is, but I've seen a lot of it. Oh, yeah. I think I'm going to buy whatever that is. Anyway, five to two. Finally going to see the T side back with a bit of a buy in, you know, in store. They can actually get the AKs. No AWP, though. For Shazam, maybe not feeling it just yet. We haven't really seen it brought out too much either for Virtus Pro. Maybe just not feeling it's required at the moment. The 4 1 split, second mid being drastically populated by the T side. And just Shazam holding at the bottom. Maybe trying to see if anyone's willing to peek out. Pop Flash does come through for Pasha. He doesn't choose to use it. Just going towards that CT arch corner as T side maybe trying something new here. This is Cloud9's round. They have all the needs to do at this time. Let's see whether this stay push can work. It's going to be Bjarli just waiting for them. And Bjarli doing all the damage. Two big frags for him. Then Taz comes in with the third. Basha chops up. And this Cloud9 assault has been demolished. It didn't work for Cloud9. They didn't get their nades in. And uh, it was more importantly Taz with the second frag that uh, saved the day for them. And whether it be Taz in pit, Bjarli in pit, they just work it so Oh, well, round after round, they're holding that down. The flashes, whatever it is coming out from the T side, it's just not working there. And we're seeing it time and time again. But the problem was when they went to face Bjarli, he had almost full vision. Yeah, which... He wasn't even flashed fully at the end of the day, which allowed him not only the opener, but he was able to follow up with no one even looking around and snacks, making light work of Sean. Just tech nines, a tiny bit of armor on towards Semphis. And this should be light work, and it is. Virtus Pro really starting to 
go through the gears now as they to extend this lead. Their CT side has been, well, textbook thus far. It's had a variety of plays to it. They've allowed Cloud9 to come onto them in that last round, but previously they've been really making the game come to them. Now see Neo waiting to close out the round, gets himself the frag onto Shazam. Pasha will wait for Shroud and nothing, but both of them flashed out and will retreat a little bit. A little. Maybe not enough. And that's going to stop him going too far as well, actually. Pasha just waiting around. He knows they're there. Shroud with a stunning deagle. Gets the second as well. Known for this sort of work. Living up to that reputation. 2v2. Both have guns for the T side. And the bombs are nothing. They can get this bomb down. They have time to do this. Now we wait and see if they can make it work. Well, there's a bonus. And anything more than that is a real bonus here because Cloud9 were down and out of this round. But it is Taz and it is Bialy fully armed and dangerous, ready to come. So this is going to take another one of us, those Shroud specials. He's done it twice this round already. Bialy down to just 13 points of health, but they will hunt him down. And that will be Virtus Pro picking up their seventh round. Shroud doing what he can then. Currently 10 to 8, so he's not exactly having a bad game, but you look on the other side, every single member of Virtus Pro having a good game currently. Maybe not excelling just yet, but then again, we are only 10 rounds in, but we are finally seeing the AWP being picked back once up into play for Shazam here. So maybe we can start seeing that one coming to the action. It might be what they need to just open these sites up. I don't know, they need something to help them out because they seem to be getting so close sometimes. It comes down to these 2v2s, they get the bomb down. And then they just lose it out. So I saw Deep Nade comes through Shazam. Nothing in Semphis get shaved away. Well, Shazam, the man we want to see do well with that orb might be struggling to make a play with it now. But all in all, T side, gonna have to find a route into this one now. Now looking to get himself in towards apartments. Nothing new there either. He's been prowling around that one throughout this game. Sean waits in case Son had pushed up. See, can Shazam make a difference here for the team? He was such an integral part in their first game that we saw from them on the loop just not too long ago. Can he do it again for them? That is pro. Lying in wait. And despite just very few shots being fired in anger, VP have four players lying in wait at A for this next move. Just 30 seconds to go and that'll be the marker for the assault to come in. Nades push forward, Snacks rattles off in towards the smoke before retreating. As Pasha will toss one over towards nothing which takes him down to just 10% of health and Pasha spies one making the crossover. Nothing has been dropped. Sean Garris will avenge but Snacks comes in with the next. Taz follows up with frag number three and that bomb site is being washed away with only Semphis left standing. He did a one on two. He's got to know Bialy's here. He's got to know it. He jumps out behind him. Semphis gets denied. Bialy again. This combo working at Pit. Taz and Bialy are just outstanding at what they're doing. And he's just denying the sights. And I love how they play when they feel, OK, it's going to be a, an A here. They feel it's going to be coming. It's going to be a full execute. They sit so far back. They play pretty passive. We see Pasha back away from the arch. He goes almost towards sight, waiting with that molly and flash. And then Bialy and Taz do the same thing. It's so hard to overcome. And I was hoping Shazam could have maybe found one of them, but sadly not the case. And once again, a buy for the T side at least, so they are able to get money on the board. Money on the board, but rounds few and far between. That's eight straight losses for them now. And, uh, let's see whether they have anything different. This time, up, the A hold is firm from Virtus Pro. They haven't really been able to uh, fake much. They haven't really been able to for you know, force any mistakes from the VP side. Tempest gets himself the frag onto his teammate. Bihali follows up onto Sean Garris and finally goes down by a recombination of Shroud and him. And it'll be Pasha now moving in towards that site, looking for Shroud, getting Shroud. And Taz has one more coming from above, but Sempis is out and it's Shazam on his lonesome against four. And this just is not working for Cloud9. It really isn't. Everything they try, deeper smokes towards pitch. Shazam just about seeing snacks. He peeks out once again, looking for a pixel to land a shot on, but 
There's a man waiting for him just below the balcony. Oh, and it's gonna be Pasha to get it in the end. And I think Cloud9, we, we, we kind of heard on the desk from Hiko, a couple of these players can go on tilt, Sempus being one of them, the amount of team kills coming in, some errors being made. Certainly gonna, not gonna put him in a good mood here. Down the bottom, four to 10 so far for him. And overall, it's, it's just the Virtus Pro Show. It really has been something special. And those uh, two rounds that uh, Cloud9 picked up seem a long, long time ago. The Katowice 2014 champions are really flexing those Pasha biceps. This next is pushed down the banana walkway, looking to see if anyone coming through. This time, Cloud9 just rattling off shots, hoping to get a pick, hoping that they can do something. But they've not been able to create a hole that they've been able to fill. They've not been able to pull players from one site to another. There's been no, uh, there's been no kind of like, well, I'm trying to think of a word better than intelligence. There's been no kind of like counterintelligence to pull out of this uh, attack for Cloud9. And VP are too smart for it. It's exactly that. They've never been able to get an opening that they can actually exploit. Shazam's been trying with, with AWP every now and then, but he's just not getting these shots because they fall back so beautifully. You know, Sax, Snax is literally sitting as far back in CTR as you can get, then Pasha will fall back to site. Bialy and Taz kind of retract back in towards Pit. This time they're actually sitting on the site, Taz joining him. And it's just making it so hard for Cloud9 to get an opening and then exploit for a rotate, but it looks like they might be trying another A. You, I guess you could just try and focus down onto Snax, but Snax is not exactly an underperformer here. The flash does come through from Pasha. The build comes in, it looks like they're gonna try and focus out on towards that pit. Snacks does find Tempest Bialy. It's an absolute massacre until finally nothing gets two, but it's too little, too late. Bialy claims it. And this game is just spiraling out of control for Cloud9. I'd love to know the role that Kuban's playing behind them right now. I mean, he obviously is a former top, top player, and you're talking about someone who could influence things. We haven't had many top players transition into this coach role. You saw uh, Khan do it, but then he was quick to get out of it. He didn't feel he was bringing value. Kuban clearly is bringing value. He's marching behind each and every one of those players. And other than going to the same hairdresser than Taz, he's <laughs> bringing something to this team. They are, they do look a different beast. They certainly do. And I, I kind of look towards Fnatic, who have Devil Walk behind them a lot, who was part of the yes, team of at, at, at some you know, form. Nothing getting Neo down. That's a different start here, actually. I'll come back to that point in a moment, because it's the first time we've seen a very early opening really happening for Cloud9. I wonder if they're going to make anything out of it. And snacks. We'll be the man to sit and wait on that side in case anyone comes through. They know they're going to have to pull someone to rotate, but there's still so much power on any single angle you're going to play here. Now is the man advantage. Now is the opportunity. What do they have to change that? Snacks is entertaining a Molotov over on B. And with that, they're going to have a two-man advantage going into A. Taz picks up the first, but he's alone on A, and he won't go any further than that. This is their opportunity. Cloud9 will put the bomb down. Pasha will make his way over. And for the first, night, first time in a long old while, Virtus Pro were caught with the wrong numbers on the wrong site. It, it took that opener from nothing. I've got to say, it, it surely had nothing. You know, I think it was Pasha who in, instantly rotated towards that B site just to you know, bolster numbers, but... Nice play in the end coming out from the T side, but can they make it stick? Surely this is not going to happen. Pasha finally getting shut down by Semphis. Snacks is waiting on exits here, and this will be finally a round on the board for Cloud9. A well-needed round, to say the very least. Snacks does take Shazam down with him. There's nothing easy here for the T side. 10 to 3. Maybe some silver lining on that cloud. However, getting back to the point about Fnatic and Devil, the way they're playing, I look at Inferno, and it's the rotates that always impress me with Fnatic, how they're always seemingly on the right side. Obviously, players like Crims aren't exactly going to give up B easily, but neither's Neo. And you always see them always seem to stack the correct place at the right time, and maybe it's this external influence to a degree that can maybe help them always have that right insight in their minds. However, we are seeing the auto-sniper with Pasha, and that could really just destroy the morale of the T side. Yeah, and worst case as well is that they lose this round and the money system really begins to end the half for them. We have two rounds down. left in it. Neo is going to make his way over towards Banana Walkway. Uh, for him, he just wanted to spy something. Zach was the one who wanted to get the kill. He did get one, but it's a trade as nothing comes in with his return. And Pasha will 
edge his way towards them. Shroud is the man who can stop them. And Sir Pasha will unleash the first. Where is Shroud? Pops his head oh. up. Bialy takes it off. And Virtus Pro have just two frags left to fight. Shazam and nothing uh, are just absolutely getting destroyed in this one. Neo finally goes down to nothing, but Taz already ready and waiting. Smoke goes out, flash goes out. Molly might do some damage, but he just walks away from it with a beautiful little pop flash over the top. Shazam does get picked up by the nade from Pasha and nothing left in a world of trouble as Taz plays it to the absolute maximum at the end then. 11 to three, this is, this is Versus Pro looking formidable. This is a great statement from them. The Cloud9 side have been over in Europe for you know, a couple of weeks beforehand mm. as well, boot camping here in Poland. They've been really trying to acclimatize and just doesn't seem to have worked for them. Pasha, 17 francs leading the board. And he has had a great first half, but is it Virtus Pro being that good or Cloud9 being that uninventive? I think it's a question we're certainly going to have to put towards our desk and maybe even on the stage after this one if it keeps going at this pace at least is the T-side going to make a bit of a ditch attempt but that ditch has just been filled with the bodies of Sean Garris and Shazam as nothing, Semphis and Shroud are the last three in this one and they really have nowhere to go. They have no opening. They've not even got a foot towards the site. They're still stuck in mid. Waiting for them on the other side. Taz just escapes from a chasing shroud. Neo gets the first frag onto nothing. Taz was so confident that someone was going to help him out with that frag onto shroud. And exactly that Pasha did. And that will be a 12 3 half time score that is, well, as you said, to borrow your own word, formidable. You do not want to be going up against that number. Definitely not. And every single team that we, we saw in these groups has been some that have just st stood out a little more than others. I think we're seeing one of them right now. Virtus Pro have been playing a stellar game here on the CT side. 12 to 3, Cloud9 didn't even look bad. They just never seemed to get an opening anywhere. Unless they put five bodies at a site and maybe get a couple of trades, I felt they never had an advantage. And Taz is looking ready. Look at this guy. He knows the crowd are behind him. And you can hear it. Taz is both captain and cheerleader at the same time. And the crowd that he loves so much are ready to cheer him over the line. And it's only going to make it harder for those Cloud9 boys who find themselves in a real, real pickle. Yeah, it's all about that pistol now for the T side Cloud. Sorry, CT side now. Cloud9 are going to have to dig deep on this because if that goes over towards the other side, it's going to be unreal. And considering we saw so many beautiful plays coming out from Virtus Pro with the way they utilize their smokes and the way they just completely encompassed the map. I can't wait to see how they do it on the T side. The T side are normally the more creative team. Uh, at times you could argue they have the more uh, room to be creative with strategies, but I don't know what on earth we're going to see from them. Yep, they're looking good. And uh, as we get ready for the second half, as uh, the team switch has been a long time coming, and... Uh, <laughs> We wait on getting this underway. The key question for Cloud9 is, you look at that scoreboard, nothing, nine frags, the spread down to three on Shazam. This is his first major, and this is a tough, tough time to uh, you know, earn your keep. I just don't see him ever getting the opportunity with the AWP. I never saw him starting to do well. And just a quick update overall on the games going on elsewhere. I know it's, it's probably a big thing on your mind. Keed are currently leading over CLG, so the American team's not having a great time at the moment. Keed on 13, CLG are on 7. Let's get into the second half here. Virtus Pro against Cloud9. This is a big uphill struggle for Cloud9, and they have to start it now. I would say to Cloud9, draw from the spirit of what I buy power did in Milan, but it didn't end so well. As will be Shazam waiting to push up and Semphis drops Pasha, and now Cloud9 has something they can work with. Neo goes in, does get one, but is down by that three-man firing squad at the top of the banana walkway, and Bialy forced to retreat. And Cloud9 will come out of that exchange, a man to the good. Oh, Shazam is right behind him in the apartment shroud just to wait. Shazam got a one-for-one one exchange, but surely they know where the bomb is. And it's looking like Semphis is getting over towards Libby very early on. Bialy's there looking for it. He knows it's going to happen, but Bialy gets denied. Semphis picks it up, and now Taz 1v3. Does make it out of the apartments, but does take down Semphis. Maybe there's a little magic left in Taz in this moment. Fakes it out. Waiting for Shroud to peer over. There's still one of the man present. 40 seconds. It's not going to matter. Shroud finds Taz. And I guess 
It's the first foot on a very long road for Cloud9. Yeah, hope for Cloud9 there. And uh, Taz will have thought he might have just had what it took to run out of that site, but in the last possible opportunity, a bullet right between the eyes. And now Cloud9's comeback must start. It's got to be now. You can see a good investment into this one. They're not messing around. Sean Garris, though, going with the swag there, maybe feeling it's, it's going to be enough to hold the position. I, I guess he's on, but he is indeed as Shazam will peek down. Dangerous. And look at the buyout coming from Verse Pro, head armor and the Tech 9. So something that we've seen time and time again doing very well. Sean Garris ready to leap around that corner and straight into Pasha's face. As the shots come towards him, Semphis will offer him some covering fire and snacks now. Grand apartments waiting to inch his way towards nothing. Virtus Pro have looked for an opening frag. They've looked to create something on either side. It hasn't come for them. And they're now going to regroup and make their way up towards B. I think you can see the shadow there. Pasha chasing him through the smoke. Does find Semphis. Now Sean Garris is called into action. The smokes do come in. Oh, he's in a great position here. I wonder if they're going to check it. Surely they will. Actually, no, they don't. And Sean should rein him oh, more than one. Biali stops him before he could do more damage and Shazam sneaking through. Biali seems aware, already checking, waiting for it. Shazam tries to peer around, gets the tag, finally takes down Biali, but the bomb is down. And Fellas Pro making the most of this. Taz waiting for nothing with open arms and it'll be Mr. Gilbert who comes out on top but took a lot of damage doing so. It is Neo left standing, has collected himself for Famous, is a man that can deliver in moments like this. But Shroud will have none of it and they will move in for the defuse. As soon as that flash came out, I saw both of them were partially flashed then. There was a moment of panic for all of us here, I can imagine. But 12 to 5, it's starting to look a little brighter on the Cloud9 side, but I'm just waiting for that one gun round to come in. I'm waiting to see what it can do, how they're going to play it out. And once again, we're seeing what's becoming quite a common trend. The Galil's coming out. The Tech 9 coming out. Actually, P250 still with Snack. So, a bit of a mixed bag. And I worry if Virtus Pro are getting already so close on some of these Ecos, what can they do with this sort of mixed bag buy? VP sit deep and are going to run almost exactly the same opening 30 seconds to this round as they did the last. They'll push someone up Banana looking for any activity up there. They'll push some people into apartments. And if they don't get anything, sooner or later they will converge on one of the two sites. Textbook for the uh, side with the weaker armory. You've got to find a way <laughs> somehow. If they can punish someone for maybe being a little, I wouldn't say overzealous, but maybe just getting a little sloppy or just making some errors. We know that Semvis does occasionally have the reputation for overpeaking if he gets frustrated or maybe making a couple of errors. But so far he's been playing very cool on the CT side, holding his own. And at the moment, the T-side yet to commit anywhere, still spread out throughout this map, and Sean just waiting. That smoke dissipated, he might get a little bit of a face full of Pasha, but... 40 seconds left, deep smoke towards Pit comes out, but will they utilize it? They're edging in, Shazam cautiously backs up, and 30 seconds are going to have to make a play soon. Yeah, they're still spread across those two and A. I think they're going to try and push at least one through A to sandwich uh, through CT spawn as the rest go into B. But uh, the push is alive, and Sean Garris is the man that will see action with only 19 seconds left on the clock. He spies the first man, realizes the numbers, and knows that he has to retreat to allow Semphis to come into the fight. He gets two of his own, snacks and Pasha have frags, but that does leave them down, and there's just seven seconds left to go. As Pasha will put that bomb down, and Sean Garris will come around and win the round. Nice play, and the clock will run out. It was almost there. You felt if there was maybe 10 more seconds or a couple more shots, it could have worked out. And I've got to say, Snacks in that one. He played watching that rotate so well, almost caught three to, you know, two to three of them out on that push across towards B. But Semphis's play then held them in that with the two pickup. Well, it's Sean that I call out. So he spotted the four, knew there's no way he's going yep. one against four, dropped deep. Allowed Semphis to make his play, picked up himself another frag, and then rather than going you know, one on one or one on two, he then waited till knowing the clock timer and just jumped around. Intelligent play from Sean, used the uh, numbers to his favor. And it's something you'd expect from the guy who's calling for this, this team. It's, it's, it's a classic Sean. He's, he's a very calm guy in comparison to maybe the more, uh, let's say, fiery Semphis. So you get this kind of nice combination when it all works well. 
however, at the moment we'll see if they can keep it working well. 12 to 6, it's starting to look a little bit more acceptable, it's starting to look a little bit closer, and the T-Side are down to very little to work with here. They've gone pretty much um, bare minimum. A couple, two, uh, Three smokes, excuse me, one flash and a little bit of armor. So maybe going to make a play towards B if they can get the smoke there. But then again, there is Sean Garris and there is Semphis waiting if they do. Nothing to play with for that VP side this time. They have but the one flash in the hands of Pasha. And they will... Yeah. Sean Garris this time might have a little more aggression in him, but the flash will pull him back. He opens up the shooting and gets himself the first frag. It's Neo that goes down. Semphis joins the fun. Taz does drop him, and uh, that'll force Sean to uh, retreat back and whip out the Tech 9 as he holds in. Now Taz is in position as well, and uh, it'll be nothing who snipes him from afar with that M4 and snacks the four points of health. Goes no further. 12-7 the score. Once again, great round from Sean Garris then. Perfectly holding his own. We see so many players in that position. It's, it's, it's so hard sometimes when they play it so late. They did have a flash, they did have a couple of smokes, but he, he keeps holding it so well. I'm looking forward to seeing if he can keep that up throughout the rest of this. And especially against a fully, well, partially bought up Virtus Pro. Still snacks with very little other than an AK and head armor, but we do see the Molotovs on Taz and Pasha to make a play out of. So this is going to be a real test. Shazam also picking up the orb. And this is the aggression that can either win or lose your game sometimes. Pasha getting eaten alive by the uh, Molotov of Sean Garris on the other side. And there'll be more wind in the limp sails of Cloud9 as they look to come back into this game. He did force that Orpa to just drop back. Shazam having to change up positions. Got to see if uh, Virtus Pro trying to take control of the apartments, or at least scare apartments away. But 2-2 two, two split for VP. I think they're just looking for an, uh, an opportunity, an entrance, uh, an overpeak, an overstep. But Cloud9 are really holding this, this great attitude towards it, being quite passive, playing that perfect back and forth, and seeming to find their pace very well so far. At the moment, it looks like the vast majority of the T side are heading over towards the A side. Shazam finally gets himself onto that scoreboard with the orb. Biali does go down, and nothing is waiting on the snap site for Snacks if he does push through. But it's Shroud to find him from Pit. And Shroud, we know this guy can be an absolute turret if placed in the right position. And now Shazam again onto the board as just Neo stands 1v4. Bomb not quite to hand. Position known. 20 seconds. I think I've listed off everything that can be against you. As a T player, but he's still fighting. Takes down Shazam. Can he make this more expensive? Can he do anything else? Oh, he's even going for a plant. And he might just get it as well. Bomb is down. Oh my god, Sean looks the wrong way. And Neo still stands. Finally dealt with by Shroud. That's starting to feel a little dangerous. Yeah, that shouldn't have been as close as it was. But nice play from Neo regardless. The first frag was just pure Neo. And uh, the second, well, as uh, Sean is having to justify to uh, nothing right now, uh, was a little yeah. bit of for good fortune. But uh, Cloud9 have five in a row now, and they're beginning to look like a different team. Yeah, and a quick update. Keed have actually won their game. The audience seem to think that it's Verse Pro's time now to step up a little bit, but just a heads up, Keed did make it through. And now let's see who's going to start joining these boys towards the late part of this tournament. And that Keed story is brilliant, actually. The crowdfunding or the community funding to get them over to here whilst they were command before they got picked up by a multi-gaming organization. Really great story. Glad to, uh, glad to see that there is uh, still heart in esports. Somewhere. Still. Sean Garris did actually push down quite deep towards Benone. I think it's the first time we've seen him actually push that far down. Normally, the passive player, but maybe switching up, trying to start feeling more confident by being able to uh, push the malleable Virtus Pro around. But still, I don't know if I'd fancy my chances just yet. With one minute left, there's still so many options available to him. The lineups are for a Snacks is getting ready to go. Shazam and Semphis by CTR. You can see him just in the background. Snacks is smoked off, so he can't quite help them, and it does look like the push is coming out for the T side. They are starting to build in towards this A side, but 40 seconds, four players for the CTs away, and Shazam just on the other side of this smoke. He knows he's got numbers coming towards him as well. He's got to. It's Neo that leads the charge. He's got Taz there as well for company, and whilst they do have the site itself, they do not have control of anything else, and they were raced in towards the bomb site and then had 
the firing squad from left, right, and center. And Cloud9 are uh, really on a comeback trail now. That's six in a row. Yeah, and Shroud starting to stretch his legs in this 17 to 14 already, top of the scoreboard for the CT side. So feeling fairly confident. I can imagine he's playing in the right place to get these when they do execute, so it makes sense. And I, I'm, I'm getting a little worried for first pro. We're starting to see that momentum maybe trickle away a little. 12 to 9 is getting very close here. And see if they can find anything from this three-man stack. Those nades coming through to Banana. Absolutely devastating. Nothing follows. And this is, well, a rather shredded Virtus Pro. A very clean round from the CT side. Just two rounds separate them now. And VP need something on the board because... They're beginning to lose hope. Pasha is going to pick up that AWP this round, and let's see what that can bring to the fray. The problem is not VP when they get into a site. The problem is VP getting to it. They just can't find an opening. Their uh, their nades have been, you know, it's much the same argument we made for Cloud9. They've been yeah. uninventive in their attack. And for all the positives we said about their CT side, for all the variety they offered on CT, they haven't done on T. Oh, great start for Shazam then, finding snacks. Second round he's tried it, this time it really did pay off. And it was a pickup for free almost there. Yeah, he got out of there without anyone being the wiser. And we'll see what Pasha can do. He's going to go up against Sean Garris, the battle for the men's health cover spot in esports. Sean Garris and Pasha as they retreat out. And nothing will come of it. I do love that boost though, just being able to see above the smoke in case anyone's by car or pushed down. I think you might have attacked so I'm not too sure. I may be wrong, you can correct me, but it looks like the T-side are going to start turning their attention possibly towards A, yet no smoke's fully committed. And Shazam awaits, but Neo takes him down, and we said there was very few openings coming out for the T-side. Well, they just found one. Four on four, Shazam out. Snacks down as well. Here comes the opportunity as VP push in towards the A-side. It's Taz who'll open up the fragging, and Sean Garris will go no further as Neo stops him. Shroud did get one in the meantime. It's Pasha that's down, but Neo will fire in those digits. And it is nothing, and Shroud up against now just two. Bialy and Neo to hold onto this site. Can they do it? Nothing coming in from the uh, library area will push in. Waits for Shroud from the pit. Shroud's gone. It's all or nothing. And Bialy and Neo combine to win the round. Virtus Pro. Now just three away from glory. It started to feel a little dangerous then, but Virtus Pro getting back into the swing of things, desperate for the opener, and they got it. Taking down Shazam, truly opened things up for them. 13 to 10. Game's back on. Both teams now fully bought up, fully comfortable in their bye. Who's going on to make this one count? You've got to be so nervous. With every peak you make, you could cost your team that round. Or win it for them. Pasha, one of those players looking for it. Trying to find anything down mid too early on. And... Alrighty. Close stuff. The crowd liking this one. And in fact, there are even kids waiting for their autograph before the game's over. This is more of the same from VP. They can't find an exit. The, they can't find an opening. The VP, the Cloud9 players are set so deep that there's nothing to be seen. And now you'll see them have to push in towards that. Uh, well, no, they're not. Oh, I was going to say they're going to make the push in towards B. What I'd love to see them do is try and take the CT spawn, push across quick through, through A and into CT spawn to sandwich a B attack. We've not seen it from either side of this uh, map so far. I think the closest we saw was maybe Snacks lurking occasionally through there when they went for that B push. And Shazam going down on the one round they've really brought home on the T side for Versus Pro. But maybe that is the weakness they need to exploit. And we are starting to see that bomb heading over. The clock is going to be against Versus Pro. And so they need to make that big heavy hit towards B. Semphis isn't in position. He's just about made it back around. Sean is still on the site, though. Pasha starting to look in. The Molotovs come out. Snacks has found Shazam, but the Flash is holding them up. The CT side are trying to slow them down. Ten seconds remain. Can the bomb make it towards the side? Sean stands in the way. Taz swipes him away as Sephis now bursts in, gets to Neo. Pasha down. Not going to find a third just yet as Bialy makes the most of it. Bomb is planted. 2v3. From Semfritz's position there, he didn't know who was planting the bomb. He was just firing at bodies. And uh, of all the ones he had to aim at, he didn't find a planter. Nothing goes down. Taz follows suit as Shroud comes in. We're at a two-on-one. It's all on Shroud. Sandwich between Virtus Pro players. 
And they will pick themselves up that round, and that will take us to 14-10. VP may be leaving it late in the half, but now just two away. Money is going to start being such a problem for the CT side. Currently, we see them going back towards the Famous with Zemphis there. I think he had to be dropped that one even. He's got that many smokes and flashes with him. But still, Cloud9 still very close to being in this game. They just seem to be pipped to the post in these rounds. And the confidence clearly building with Taz. This guy actively peeking, actively looking towards that B site, feeling maybe that's a weakness they need to exploit. Zemphis wasn't quite there that time. He had slightly backed away. He made his way in later, but maybe that's what they found. Finally, that opening. And Shazam even not actively in mid anymore. And it's a slightly different setup for the CT side. I want to see if they can make it work. As the T side just starting to toy with them, try and find out where they are, gather that information, and try and do something with it. One minute into this round. Versus Pro, if they get this, he gets that ever important 15th round. Snacks, though, starting to lurk. Nothing finds him. And Snacks has been exploiting his way through that apartment the entire time, trying to find a way through. And this time he met a bit of resistance. Taz also meets it on B. It's not looking so clean this time for the T side. And with 40 seconds left, it's going to be another close last minute push, it seems. I like to use all of the round as it comes up. And it'll be Pasha who. Lies in wait, but look at the role of Sean Garris on the minimap. Where is he? Pushing up mid. Pasha picks himself up the orp onto Shazam. And they know where it is, and here's Sean Garris. Gets himself the frag on the Bialy. Pasha's down. Nothing has the next one. And now it's all on Neo. One on three. He's got himself the first, but will in the end say the orp might just be enough. Only seven seconds left to go on this one as well. And Virtus Pro. It Guilty of uh, taking a little too much time, and credit to Sean Garris and his play around the back. I think it's the first time we've really seen him having to push around behind them like that. I don't think we've witnessed it before, especially in that quick time. Maybe it's becoming more of a, a real moment for these guys to get those quick rotates in. But then again, money is going to be an issue for the CT side as well. We are seeing the AK being res uh, remained. We are seeing the mollies coming in. Just a smoke and a flash for nothing. And well. Nothing opening up in that last round so well towards Snacks, just making it hard work. And the T side down to a Deagle, a P250, and look at the aggression coming out from the CTs. Looking like they want to switch this up. Dangerous against a team on 14 rounds. You know, I've been thinking about this for a while, whether they should have done something like this, but a save round isn't the round I would have done to try and mix it up. You want to push down mid to put some fear into your opponents that you're capable of anything. And uh, the Frank's coming in, and we're down to a two on two. Shazam took down Semphis, and it's all possible now. Look at and an M4 to play with, and Snacks with Bialy spot out. Sean Garrison is just Shazam. The player that everyone looked towards is could, could he step up in these moments? Has maybe just cost them something huge, but now Shazam has to take it in, and Neo just stops him in his tracks. Well, from Cloud9's perspective, you could say, nice that you wanted to mix it up, but in the end, that's what cost them. That team kill and just not being in the right place at the right time cost them that round and they now have four match points. This is their moment. If there was ever going to be one, it has to be now. Pistols, whatever they could get for the CT side and Virtus Pro, you can see them. They are pumped up in this. Pasha going for that cheeky peek towards the car in case anyone would dare to do it again. And I think, I hope the Cloud9 learned this le their lesson. Shazam, who we're on board with. He waits, spied nothing, and VP go back to Old Faithful. Let's find a hole and see what we can do about it. We know that Cloud9 are hurting. We know that they've not got a full spread of weapons. So we don't need to push it. That'll be the mentality on their team speak right now. And it's going to be a brutally efficient way to close out this match, should they do it. It'd be such a shame to see Sean Garris lose that, and lose that M4 early on because there's no one else to pick it up. Semphis was the only player near him who's already got a gun, so that would be kind of put to waste. But nothing Shazam and Shroud are running with so little in this if it does come down to that A play. 30 seconds left. We're going to find out very soon how this one ends or continues. And it looks like it's going to be a B play, faked out by Snacks because everyone else is lining up on B. But I don't know if they've got the time for this. Neo, Pasha and Biali, they're the ones with the bomb. They're the ones who have to make the play here. 
Kasha pushes in. It'll be a trade there as they do get the AWPA, but Semphis will be quick on the uh, movement over towards that B site. As he is the man who will have to hold it down as the bomb is being planted with 10 seconds left to spare. Semphis goes down at the hands of Bialy. And now they're up against three pistols, and this is not going to be easy as Virtus Pro look to close out the match here as the recovering Cloud9 players push in from the ruins. But Taz lays down the fire and lays ruin to Shazam. It's nothing who'll get in there in the end, but there are but two players left alive. Nothing still going strong. Neo Zorp drops Shazam, and it's nothing one versus one with the bomb to play with. Neo will take it away, and Vernus Pro will open up their IEF Kennedy of defense with a resounding victory over Cloud9. Versus Pro making a damn big impression into this one. First time on the stage during this tournament so far. The crowd are on their feet. And that's what they needed to get those nerves away, get everything in the right place. And you've got to say, Cloud9, they put up a good performance once it got rolling. It got close, but it's all about those men right there. They just played so well. Virtus Pro, this is the first step on a very long ladder to defending their crown and to becoming the first team to win two majors. No one has done it. For Cloud9, there are lessons to be learned and more matches to be played. Yes, there is a long route ahead of them. Both teams, very different paths now ahead. As Virtus Pro can be very pleased with that performance. How they played on that CT side to begin with was nothing short of inspirational at times. The way they pushed and pulled the T-side around was beautiful to watch, and I can imagine that's only the start of what we're in for going forward in this tournament. Cloud9, I don't think we'd be too saddened because some of those rounds they dropped just seemed like mis I don't know, mistakes more than actual real errors of execution. When it worked, it worked so well, and then when it went wrong, it just felt like there was a real mistake somewhere in the midst. A lot of positives on that uh, VP victory, and to find out more, we're going to throw it over to Sean on the main stage. Thank you so much, Stu. I'm joined Thank by you, Thank you, Game. Thank you for being here. I'm joined here by Taz. Taz, please tell me, sir, how, much, how was that for you? Oh, man, it was stressful. Like... Uh... We remember that we had like a lot of scores when we were leading like 12 to 3 on Inferno and we tend to lose these games. And when we were like losing all these rounds over and over and man, at 7-0 when there was like 0-7, we were pretty like, okay, shaken. So I, I'm just happy that the guys took the control. I think that uh, Neo Neo d did a lot of crazy good shots. Now, I mean, to take nothing away from Cloud9, they absolutely took it to you. They were really in there. I mean, how, how did that feel? Obviously, you've got the crowd here. You, you know that's going on. I mean, what's going through your head? Uh, I, I, started, I just tried to be calm, and uh, I knew that uh, our fans are here. I knew that we have all the crowd behind us, so we just tried to stay calm and think uh, what to do, what we need to try, and... Uh, it's, it seems like we made a step forward on Inferno T side. We learn, like with, with each round, we learn what to do, what are our, our mistakes and weaknesses of the opponent. So it feels, it feels really good. And also I think that like this close game, it was a very important test for us because uh, we, we tend to fall down on T side when there is a lot of pressure. So it's really, really good that it happened now. Excellent. And of course, looking to tomorrow, this has been your first game that you've had the crowd here being able to really get behind you. Does that give you a little bit of energy thinking this is going to happen again? You're going to have that same feeling? I mean, they almost feel like they're the sixth man in your team. Of course, man. Before we even came here, we knew that Katowice is our home ground. We knew that we have all this. You see, I'm like cracking down when I'm talking about our fans here. So, yeah, I'm just really proud of them. Beautiful stuff. Beautiful stuff. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Of course, we're going to head over now and see the man who always can, and that is the machine. <laughs>